Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in this series uh, in which I'm trying to cover the different actions and aspects of European Universalis the Price of Power uh, just like the last episode where I was trying to cover a uh, few actions that were connected between each other so those were uh, exploration, colonization and trade uh, today I think that we will be covering uh, some aspects related to diplomacy and relations between realms. Uh, so I'm using the same game that I had already saved here as an example and this will be what gives me uh, the, the frame to explain those. So uh, as I believe I was already explaining, in the game of European Universalis the Price of Power you will see that there are more realms other than just the player realms. So the player realms are easily spotted by the player towns or other pieces that are placed on the map. But also you see that there are locations like here in Westphalia where there are multiple realms that are independent and those are called NPRs, non-player realms. So we will be focusing today at the different actions that uh, will be making us engage with those realms. So the first one that we'll be looking at, and for that we are focusing on these cubes, is the influence action. The way in which this game is representing your influence across the map is by placing these cubes, which actually are the same ones that you are using to track how much uh, mana power you have or to use as uh, cardinals and in some cards like this one, when we are playing these display cards, the ones with the eyeball, we also use the same cubes. So when those cubes are actually placed on the map, those are representing the influence that a player has in that area. Each area can contain a maximum of five influence, uh, regardless of to which player those belong. And then uh, the, that influence can be used for some actions that we'll be covering either today or in another video. But basically, as I was saying, the first action that I wanted to cover is the influence action. So the influence action is quite simple. It just allows you to place your cubes from your supply into the areas that are adjacent to your realm. So, or adjacent to an existing influence or uh, in an area where you have a marriage or an alliance. So to take this action, the first thing that you have to do, the first cube that you want to play, uh, place you have to spend one diplomatic power uh, the thing is that you may uh, place multiple cubes in the same action uh, just the first one must always be by spending one diplomatic power then the following one so let's say we we want to put the first one of course paying diplomatic power and then the the following ones can be uh, placed with either paying another diplomatic cube for for each one that you want to, to place or by spending three ducats so for instance I could uh, as I said sp uh, spend one diplomatic cube for the first one to place one influence then I could take another two from my diplomatic power as well and I have here one ducat so I could take one loan to gain five ducats and spend those six ducats to get another two influence and those two I would take them from the supply when you are placing the influence as I was saying before you can place it in areas where you have uh, adjacent to your realm sorry so adjacent to areas where you have towns or adjacent to your existing influence or alliances and marriages that you may have in the map so it's important that uh, once you start placing some influence you cannot then uh, use that new influence to place some more adjacent to it. You are looking at the starting original point. The second rule is that uh, when you're placing influence, you can place a maximum of two in each area. So here, for instance, I can place two. Here I could place another two, for example, and let's say one more over there. There is uh, some ideas that will allow you to go over that limit, but the generic rule is that you can place only a maximum of two per area. And then, as we said before, uh, there can be a maximum of five influence in the same area. So let's say that here, for instance, Austria had already four. I would have been able to place one more to, to fill the area, let's say, uh, up to the maximum of five cubes. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to place one more because it's already full. Uh, there are actions that will allow you to remove the opponent's influence and place your own, but those come in, in sort of action cards. Uh, we can check later some examples. 
So yeah, that allows us to spread our influence on the board. So the question is, why do we want to spread our influence in the board? So there are other actions, and the next one that we'll check is the Forge Alliance action, that in order to perform it, we will have a requirement on a minimum amount of influence that we must have in that area. So uh, for instance, to forge an alliance with one of the non-player realms, we need to have at least two influence in that area, uh, in any area that they, they have provinces. So for instance, here uh, we could see Brownswich that we have three influence in Lower Saxony, so we could perform the action to gain an alliance with them. So the cost to forge an alliance depends on the size of the realm with whom you want to have this alliance. Uh, you are looking at their shields, so these are small provinces, uh, and then we have some other provinces around the map that are large provinces, like for example Krakow here, or for example here Praga. So depending on the size of the provinces, uh, you are adding up to know what's their tax income. So these are two small provinces, meaning each one of them would have one tax income. So Brownswich would be a realm of two tax income. Uh, Brandenburg would have three, for example. Or if we were to look at uh, Bavaria, that uh, Bohemia, sorry, here for instance, they would have one, two, three, four, and five. So in order to forge an alliance, you need to spend an amount of diplomatic power equal to half the tax income of the target. So in this case, for instance, with Brunswick, we would be looking at spending one diplomatic power since they are a two province, uh, a two tax province. So we will spend one. And when you forge an alliance, you gain one more influence in their capital. So that would be a reason why uh, you are spreading your influence. Then there are some action cards that will also be referring to your relation with an NPR or the amount of influence that you have in their area. So just as an example, I took here the Royal Marriage card that, for instance, says that you would place a marriage on the capital of an NPR or one of your vassals, but it requires you to have one influence in one of the target realm's areas. So for instance, you know, in order to, to make uh, uh, marriage with Brownswich, again, I would need to have any influence in that area. Uh, it's worth noting that one marriage, it's also considered to be an influence itself, which is also here reminded in the Royal Marriage card. So before when I was saying that there can be a maximum of five influence cubes, that's correct, that's a strict maximum in an area. However, as the marriages themselves cost, count as one influence cube, there will be situations in which there might be more influence in an area than just the five cubes. If multiple uh, players have uh, marriages in that area or if you have multiple marriages with several realms, because as I said before, each one of the shields represents a realm. So here, for example, this would be still a marriage with Brownswick, but I could also have decided to instead marry with Magdeburg or with Bremen or with Hamburg and I could have multiple of those. At the beginning of the game you have a limit of three marriages and three alliances, but there are ideas that will allow you to go up to four. Uh, then uh, the other card that I wanted to use as, as an example is the Subjugate card. Uh, throughout the game you will be not only promoted to, to conquer military your allies, uh, your allies, sorry, <laughs> the other realms, uh, which we will check in another video how that works. But the other way to try to expand, expand your realm uh, would be by using the, the net of alliances and subjugates to do that annexation diplomatically. So the subjugate card requires, first of all, uh, that you are at peace. I, I should have said that, but yeah, when in order to for, for, forge an alliance with another realm, you also need to be at peace and the target also needs to be at peace. Likewise with the subjugate, in order to subjugate, uh, to play a subjugate card, you would need to be at peace and the target as well. And this card is used to turn your allies into your vassals or turn your vassals into your own towns. So that's the way, let's say, of diplomatically expanding your realm. In order to play the card, as we said, first of all, you have to target a non-player realm with whom you have an alliance. Both the target uh, non-player realm 
and yourself have to be at peace but also you need to discard influence from that realm uh, equal to their tax so in this case for instance we were already talking that Brunswick had a tax value of 2 so we would need to discard 2 influence cubes let's say that they don't have this marriage for now so we would spend 2 of the influence cubes in order to then place our vassal tokens in that allied realm and then they would stop being uh, an independent realm they would still be considered uh, a realm apart from us but they would be our vassals which would give us some additional income and some additional uh, manpower in an in a different turn you would be able to then once again play a subjugate card on Brunswick who is now your vassal to turn that vassal into your own town so again you would have to spend another two influence let's put this influence for now here and that would allow you to uh, remove those vassal tokens and substitute them with your own with your own towns the main requisite in order to play a subjugate uh, on top of being at peace and on top of discarding influence is that you need to be of bigger size than the target so normally you need to have more than uh, sorry you, you need to be twice or more the size of that realm in this case I'm playing already as, as Denmark so I'm quite large and I don't have that issue but at the beginning of the game it's possible that you will try to subjugate some some realms that are middle sized let's say and you are still not that large and that's when having a marriage comes into play when you have a marriage you don't need to have twice the size of the target you only need to be bigger than them so let's say you have a, a realm that has 10 tax income a classic example could be for instance Austria that they start with four five six seven eight nine uh, and then it's possible that towards the beginning of the game you will be looking at getting Hungary let's say so in order to annex uh, to subjugate Hungary who starts with eight influence you would normally be required to have twice their size but by having a marriage with them you would only need to be uh, of bigger size than them additionally if the target has any vassals of their own so for instance Hungary that starts actually with Croatia as their vassal you must have a royal marriage with the overlord uh, and then the other thing that I also wanted to say is that when you're trying to play a subjugate card you not only are counting the targets tax income but also the amount of influence from other players that are in the in those areas so here for instance let's say again that I don't have the marriage I would have two influence cubes but in order to subjugate uh, our ally Brunswick we would need to have two from their tax income and one more because of the influence from Austria so actually in order to play a subjugate card I would need to have at least three influence there so throughout the game you will see that players will start to spread their influence in order to forge alliances in order to uh, subjugate their allies and so on but also you will use your influence to harm your opponents to try to for example block the amount of influence that can be placed in an area try to uh, put extra influence in areas where your uh, enemies will try to uh, subjugate the opponents to deny them or to make it more expensive for example uh, so there are multiple ways to, to play this game and uh, that, that's quite the beauty that, that it has there are action cards that will allow you for example to steal the enemy's allies so let's say that uh, Austria is playing new alliance uh, they would have to spend four diplomatic power and this card will allow them for instance to remove two uh, influence that is in a target NPR so they could for example choose Brunswick to remove two of my own influence to actually replace them with two of their own and if now they have more influence than than I do uh, they could break my alliance and get an alliance by themselves so there are there, there is one side of this game that as I said before focus perhaps in the military but also the diplomatic game uh, it's really interesting and it has a lot of stuff to do uh, on the background once you start to get to know how everything works uh, one thing that I was not mentioning before is that you are also allowed 
to force an alliance with a realm that is currently allied to someone else. So for example, here Austria, uh, they have the requisite of at having at least two influence. Uh, if at any point they have more influence than the current ally, they would be able to spend the appropriate cost and forge an alliance with that realm. So let's say here they would want to forge an alliance with Brunswick, so they could spend one diplomatic power since the tax value was two in order to remove our alliance, the one that we had as Denmark, and place their own. Note that they wouldn't gain the extra influence because at this point the area is already full, so that, that would not be possible. Uh, other things that we can see uh, that matter regarding diplomacy is how to uh, then be able to spread your, your realm, let's say, by conquering other lands. Uh, it's something that we'll look, as I said, in another realm, in another video, sorry, but the action that you can take is to fabricate a claim. So spending two diplomatic power, let's say that you had another one, you are allowed to then fabricate a claim on an adjacent area. So we would take one claim and we can place it on any area adjacent to our realm. So let's say that my diplomatic ways of getting into uh, Sa Lower Saxony failed because I was blocked by Austria, they took over my alliance and so on. So the other way to spread our influence, let's say, around, not spread our influence, sorry for that, but uh, try to spread our realm around and diplomatically affect an area is to place a claim on it. Uh, we can place claims adjacent to our realm, so here for example from Jutland I would be able to place a claim in, in Lower Saxony and this will allow us to prepare for future conquest, it gives us a causus belly now against all of the realms in that area and, and will allow us to declare war at them without any, having any consequence. Uh, finally, uh, the other type of diplomacy that you can have in the game is not only with the non-player realms, but you can also r have some diplomacy with the other players by taking the player-to-player -player diplomacy action. In the player-to-player -player diplomacy action, it allows you to do multiple things. Uh, it can allow you to spend some diplomatic power to either receive or sell, uh, receive or send ducats to a player, for every 10 ducats that you are sending or receiving, you would pay one diplomatic power. You can also sell provinces to other players. So for instance, imagine that I had this claim here. In an area where you have a claim, you can purchase a province from another player. So let's say I could uh, ask them uh, in a negotiation that I would like to purchase Amsterdam from them. So you would spend both players would spend one diplomatic, uh, one administrative power, sorry, and then depending on the size of the of the town, you would be able to spend a certain amount of money. There is a minimum of, of three ducats per tax base, and I believe it's 15 per tax base. So, if I wanted to buy, let's say, Amsterdam, because it's important to note that you can only uh, sell your own towns, so the vassal uh, tokens. Uh, representing that this is another realm, which I cannot sell, but Austria could sell me Amsterdam. So I could then agree with Austria uh, for a payment of between 3 and 15 ducats, since it's a one tax province. Uh, finally, by spending one diplomatic power per each, you could also either marry or ally another player. Uh, we will see it in another video, but you can ally other players first to avoid uh, being able to, to enter into conflict with each other as easily, uh, since normally you cannot declare war at your allies. Uh, we will check all of those things, as I said, in, an in a later video. But also you could ally your, your other players in order to then fight together in some conflict and, and calling them to, warm, to arms. Uh, and then when you marry another player, uh, you also get to draw uh, one action card of the choice of the player who takes the action. So, uh, in order to do this player-to-player -player action, uh, the player who's taking the action, as I said, uh, normally is the one that has to pay for it, uh, except for the sell provinces action in which uh, the player who participates in that sale with you, whether it is by selling it or by purchasing the, the town, uh, also has to pay one administrative power just as you. If you are at war, just like when we saw with the NPRs, you cannot ally, you cannot marry, and you cannot sell 
or purchase provinces, but you could still uh, send and receive some money. So uh, hopefully this gives also uh, a better view on the diplomatic aspects uh, of the game and perhaps on the next video we will be focusing already on some warfare and we will, use, we will be using some of the concepts that we've seen now such as influence, alliances and claims uh, in order to explain some of the aspects that we will be checking in the next video. So once again, hope you like the video, let me know in the comments and, and see you in the next one.